We want to go on now and think about sensory neurons. And this is how we are aware of the environment. So we can see, we can smell, we can taste, we can feel, we have tactility, so that we are aware of our environment. So let's think about the neurological basis for this as we think about the sensory neuron. And we can put an E on the end because we're English, the Americans. If you're watching in the States, you don't put an E on the end. Now, we've looked at the motor neuron already in the first video in this series, and the components of the sensory neuron in many ways are very similar. But the sensory neuron begins in the periphery. So here we might have some peripheral sensory receptors. For example, these could be in the skin. So in the skin, for example, we have touch receptors. We have pressure receptors. We also have three nerve endings with no apparent receptors on the end that detect things like pain and heat and cold. So all the tactile stimuli you're receiving in your brain from your skin is being generated by these peripheral sensory receptors. So what happens is there'll be an external stimulus to these peripheral sensory receptors. So let's suppose these are touch receptors. So someone touches the surface of your skin or there's some contact with the surface of your skin. There's some touch. Now what that will do is when you experience that touch, if this is a touch receptor, that will mean that this generates a brand new nerve impulse. And that process is called transduction. And that's taking place in these peripheral sensory receptors. Peripheral sensory receptors. And it's the same if it was, say, a pain receptor. If there was a painful stimulus damaging the body tissues, that would cause transduction in the specialised pain receptors called the nociceptors. So in the motor neuron, the new nerve impulse was generated in the cell body of the motor neuron of the motor cortex in the brain. Here, the new nerve impulse is actually generated in the periphery as a result of this process of transduction. And then there's going to be a nerve fibre carrying this information in towards the central nervous system. And because this is carrying information in, this is called an afferent system. So the motor neurons were efferent, carrying information from the central nervous system out towards the periphery, whereas the peripheral nervous system is afferent, the information is going in towards the central nervous system from the periphery. So it's travelling in that direction. And again, there's an electrical activity. The nervous impulse is electrical in nature. There is this depolarization. The initial depolarization is generated in the receptors as a result of this process of transduction. And then that's propagated along. And if this, for example, is in your hand, <clears throat> the information has got to go in towards the central nervous system so you can feel what is in your hand. You need that information. Now the sensory neurons are neurons, they are individual cells. Therefore they need a cell body, they need a nucleus with the cytoplasm. But here there's no cell body in the periphery because it would be too bulky. So there's just the peripheral receptors there generating the new nerve impulse. And the cell body in a sensory neuron is actually in a little side branch like this. So the cell body is in a little side branch. And if this nerve is coming from your hand, this cell body is very near the spinal cord. And we get lots of cell bodies together because there's thousands of individual sensory neurons. 
and they all clump together in an area called the dorsal root ganglia. The dorsal root ganglia. A ganglia is a collection of cell bodies near the spinal cord. And because this is near the spinal cord, the next bit is for the impulse to go into the spinal cord and there the sensor and neuron terminates. So here, if we're looking at a particular level of the spinal cord, here we would have a cross section here. This is the spinal cord here in cross section. The sensory neuron has taken the information into the spinal cord. From there, that sensory information can go up towards the brain. So we notice that the nerve impulse is traveling from the periphery towards the nerve cell body. Now, any fiber carrying information towards a nerve cell body is defined as a dendrite. So this is the dendrite of the sensory neuron. Now you might remember from the previous talk that motor neurons have short dendrites and long axons. Here we notice that sensory neurons have long dendrites and the information goes from here to the cell body, from the cell body it goes out from the cell body into the spinal cord via this fibre here. And if this fibre is carrying the nerve impulse away from the cell body, by definition it's going to be an axon. So this would be the axon here. So motor neurons, short dendrites, long axons. Sensory neurons, long dendrites, short axons. And that's taking that into the spinal cord. Now, the sensory neurons, again, it's good to have rapid transmission of the electrical nerve impulse. It's good to have this protected. It's good to have the dendrite protected. It needs nourished. And to facilitate those things, we're going to have the myelin sheath, again made up of the Schwann cells, again wrapping themselves around the fibres, in this case the dendrites, just as they did with the motor neurons. The size is about the same, they're about a millimetre, so there can be hundreds of individual Schwann cells with their myelin sheaths. Myelin is that fatty material produced by the Schwann cells which insulates, protects, nourishes the fibre. And again, the depolarization generated by the peripheral sensory receptors doesn't need to go down the whole length of the dendrite, it can bounce from one node to the next, just in the same way it did with the motor neurons. The process of saltatory transmission. Via these nodes, the neurofibril nodes. neurofibril nodes of Ramvir. So again, these small gaps between the individual Schwann cells, very important to facilitate this process of saltatory transmission. So we see the components are very similar to the motor neuron, they're just differences in shape. So motor neuron, short dendrites, long axon, sensory neurons, long dendrite, short axon, similar components in terms of the fibre and the myelin sheath. The sensory neuron also has a nucleus, a cytoplasm with the cell membrane, but that is off to the side of the neuron itself. 
and in the case of the peripheral sensory neurons all these cell bodies are located close together next to the spinal cord in this area called the dorsal root ganglia.